Hi, this is Richard, and today we're going to work on the third tutorial. Uh, we're going to be looking at all the instruments and all the buttons that they that they have. Um, so we're going to be talking a lot about um, synthesizers today. Um, I when I started learning this program, I didn't know anything about synthesizers, but um, hopefully I can give you a solid foundation uh, that all synthesizers kind of go off of. Um, that should help you out because all synthesizers kind of have the same basic uh, features uh, even if they're more complicated they all have this the same kind of structure um, so first thing we do I just first thing I want to go over is how to load instruments uh, I know we talked about this in the very first tutorial but I just want to reiterate how this works um, so Put simply, there's two. There's one. You get your instruments from this box right here. Out of all these instruments, you get your instrument. Th right here is where you get your effects, and this thing up here is where you get a combination of instrument and effects. Now, this library thing on the right, this will show you whatever is highlighted here on the left. So right now, this box is highlighted, even though it's blank. So it's giving you the options that are right here when I click on it. This is the same menu as this menu up here. Um, if I were to pick an instrument, then all of a sudden this thing will be highlighted and all the options in this instrument show up in this library and they change. Now when you when you pick up uh, instruments in these libraries, normally you can, if you want to find instruments from this place, you can click on here and you can find instruments. So this menu right here and this menu are the same same menu. Um, let me just pick a really quick uh, effect. This effect, um, when when this is highlighted, okay, this is not a good example because it's not showing you. So let me pick a different one. Okay, here's a reverb. Now this is highlighted, so all the options in this thing show up here in the library because this is highlighted. This uh, the actual effect is highlighted. Um, so let me get a new instrument and I want to show you something. Um, so I found an instrument with an instrument and effects. Now if you take now this 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 uh, combination is highlighted right now. If I click on this just where the instrument's coming from and highlight that, then I can see what instrument it actually is using. It's using the transcord stab mod w so if i go and i pick the exs24 the same instrument that was used and i go to the transcord stab mod 4 w i get this instrument now let me open up the previous one and let me play this one so they're both transcord stab mod w but uh, the difference is this first one has the effects, all three of these effects going on. The second one doesn't. Now, if I turn off these effects for the first one, all you have to do is click Option, click, and those will turn off. And this is what you get. So both of them are, they originate with the same instrument, and the only difference here is that this one has effects on it. If I turn it back on, you can hear the difference. Now, if I click on the instrument where I can click on other instruments in this first instrument, uh, if I if I choose another instrument, then the instrument will change, but the effects stay the same. So that that vibrating tremolo effect is still staying the same, but the instrument underneath that is just changing. Okay, um, another thing you might have noticed that, uh, let me get a blank instrument. All I did was click or uh, highlight this and I let go. When you do that, um, you'll default to stereo. If you want a mono, if you want a multi output, then you can get those. But if you just let go when it's highlighted, uh, you'll default to stereo. So usually that'll be a little bit faster. On the EXS24, you can actually, instead of finding instruments here, uh, you click them on here, and this is where the, the menu is. Alright, let's start 
way up at the top. Oh, one more thing about this is that you can bypass these instruments um, or you can bypass the effects. Let me show, open up this. Now when I option click it on the left, uh, like I did before, that but I could either do that to bypass them or I can click the actual bypass buttons. Bypass just turns off these things for the moment. Um, and if I want to delete this instrument, I just go here to no plugin. If I want to get rid of these effects, no plugin. If I want to get rid of this whole preset of effects and, and uh, instrument, I go to reset channel strip. Okay, so that's that should be it. Um, so first of all, let's go over the first instrument. That would be the ESM one, or the ESM. Sorry, uh, this is probably the one of the most basic synthesizers. Um, now, when you when you when you're using synthesizers, there's four main features you gotta remember. There's an oscillator, there's a filter, there's an LFO and there is an ADSR. So an oscillator is what's making your sound. Um, it could be a sound wave, if it's a, if it's a real instrument it could be like your lips buzzing in a trumpet or it could be a reed vibrating. Uh, so whatever is, is vibrating to make the sound. Uh, in synthesizers they use different types of sound waves. Uh, these are the four basic shapes that you'll see. A sine wave, a square wave, triangle wave, and sawtooth wave. They all have their own characteristic sounds to them. Sine wave sounds really smooth and mellow square um, and sawtooth are more biting. Uh, sine waves actually have no overtones to them, but everything else, every other sound that you hear has some sort of combination of overtones or harmonics. So these are the four basic uh, types of, of waves and you're gonna, uh, you'll see some combination of some of these in the future, um, but these are the basics. So your oscillator is what's making the sound. Um, the next thing you need to worry about is the filter. A filter is just something that filters sounds or frequencies. It cuts cuts out something. Um, then you have LFOs. Those are low frequency oscillators. Um, let me open up a frequency chart. This is the EQ. Um, this shows you the range of human hearing. Um, so the hu the range goes from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Uh, anything below 20 hertz, the human ear can't hear because it's just too slow, too low. Um, but what a low frequency oscillator does is it uses the frequencies below 20 hertz to its advantage. It, it applies those, those, uh, those vibrations to the sound, to the initial oscillation, oscillation or the initial sound that you're creating, and it makes it vibrate uh, from a range of 0 to 20 hertz. Um, so that's what an LFO, do it, LFO does. ADSR, that has to do with um, the amount of time that the instrument takes to come in and out when you press down and release the uh, your keyboard. Um, so those four things are, are the things you need to worry about. So starting off on the ESM1, uh, our oscillator is right here. We have two options. We can do a sawtooth or we can do a square or we can do some combination of the two. Um, so this is our oscillator section. Right here on the left you have 8, 16, and 32. This is just changing the octave. Pretty simple. The glide will glide in between different notes. But you have to make sure that you hold down uh, the first note as you press down the second one. If you just hold, if you just let go on the first note when you're about to play the second one, it won't actually glide. Okay. Um, now over here we have the cutoff and the resonance. These are two big ones. These are the filter section. The cutoff just takes away frequencies. When this thing is all the way up, you're going to hear all the frequencies from low to high. And when it comes down, it's going to cut away the higher frequencies. Uh, let me open up this um, frequency uh, chart again. You can see how, how this works. So you 
see how that kind of works. Um, all it's doing is moving where the frequencies are going to be cut off on the higher end. Now this is called a low pass or a high cut filter. If I uh, turn this on, you c I can replicate this uh, in a similar way. Now I've turned this all the way up so that all of them are going to come through and now I'm going to cut it off th with this method. Listen to this. So this is the same exact thing. Um, this is a it's called a low pass filter because the lower frequencies are being passed through and the higher frequencies are being cut off. Low pass and high cut mean exactly the same thing. If I were to do the opposite direction, uh, this would be called a high pass or low cut filter. So for, a for this purpose, and generally speaking, cutoffs will be low pass or high cut filters. As you go down, the frequency will be cut off. Okay. The resonance, oh, let me open that back up. The resonance, all that does is make a spike at where the cutoff frequency is. So here's a little drawing of showing where, where it's cutting off. Um, all it's doing is, all the resonance does is when you increase it, this part, this right here where the cutoff frequency is, it would just, it will make a major spike. So you can hear, have a listen here. I'll turn it up all the way, then I'll move it. So just wherever this cutoff is moving left and right, up and down the frequency range, uh, there's just a big spike right there, and it kind of has a, an interesting effect. I don't really use the resonance very often, but cutoff is a, is a much more frequent one. All right, over here we have the volume section. This is the volume, it's pretty straightforward. The velocity volume is telling you what, is telling you how much the actual velocity that I, that I hit down on the keys, how much that's gonna affect your volume. So when I put this all the way up, then I, I have a very wide range that the velocities can affect volume. So I can have very low uh, velocity and very high velocity, or very low volume, very high volume. So. That's depending on how hard I hit the keys. If I put all the way down, then my range of velocities is very narrow. It only stays at one velocity uh, or one volume. Uh, and the volume is set to being high right now. So all of them, no matter if I press down the keyboard soft or loud, they're all going to be really high. I can move the volume down, and they'll just stay at wherever this volume level is at. doesn't matter how hard I hit or how soft I hit, they all stay there. But as I increase this, then I can get a wider range of lower and higher freq higher uh, velocities or, or volumes. Um, decay. Uh, let's see. I'm I'm not going to go all over all the buttons. I'm just going to go over the most important buttons that you need to know. Uh, you don't need to know all of them because there's just so many of them. But you'll you should understand the most important ones. So let's go on to the filter. This kind of I believe this works in the same kind of fashion that velocity volume works. So as the velocity as you turn this up, depending on how you hit the how hard you hit the keys, will open or close or utilize the filter cutoff. Um, if you pull it all the way down, then uh, there's more of a narrow field whereby your velocities will affect the actual filter. Okay, and then you have an overdrive here. This is just like an extra volume thing that you can really turn it up louder than you would normally. Sometimes if you have it too loud, you'll get distortion, and sometimes you want that effect, so that's what the overdrive is for.